these are these two cases affected every indigenous family, every indigenous reserve across this country, and that involved when uh, indigenous women used to marry non-indigenous uh, or non-status indigenous men, they they lost their status and. The Supreme Court of Canada and Laval basically said that was not discrimination against women and that uh, basically endorsed it. And uh, Sandra Lovelace, a few years later, wound up going before the same committee, one of these same committees I'm talking about, the United Nations Human Rights Committee, and actually they said to Canada that they were violating her uh, rights as an indigenous woman by taking her status away. And it resulted in Bill C-31 in 1985 being passed and all of those women being reintroduced into their community along with their children and you know, every reserve in the country was affected. Many, most families were affected by that kind of thing. But that just shows you when Canada wants to and it has the political will to, they can actually implement these, these, these uh, international treaties when they want to. So you need to really ask yourself, like, why do they not do it when it comes to indigenous proprietary interests? I think you all kind of know why. <laughs> but anyways, this is uh, the number one provision that I think indigenous people need to be cognizant and aware of. And it's, it's all, it says that all peoples have the right to self-determination. By virtue of that right, they uh, freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. So that's Article 1 in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, it's also the number one covenant on the international economic, social, cultural rights. They're basically those two treaties, international human rights treaties, are known as the self-determination treaties because they both start off with the, identically the same wording. And actually Article 3 in the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People actually says that Indigenous people are entitled to self-determination and it spins off some of the same wording as here. But the difference between the declaration and the treaty is that this is an actual, this is actual international law. The declaration is not international, it says what should be. But you need to understand that the United Nations Human Rights Committee says that this right actually belongs to Indigenous people here in Canada. That's what you need to know. And that's Article uh, 2 of the whole of that provision too. Paragraph 2, I should say. And it says, All peoples may for their own ends freely dispose of their natural wealth and resources without prejudice to any obligations arising out of the international economic cooperation based upon the principle of mutual benefit and the international law. In no case may a people be deprived of its own means of subsistence. And when you apply this principle to uh, this article to uh, how indigenous people are treated, especially when you go back to the 0 0.2 framework, it's not being dealt with fairly in here. In fact, uh, you'll see uh, where the UN says that pretty pointedly. One of the things that I do, and I'm going to be doing that um, with regard to the treaty process again, is I do write uh, uh, early uh, warning and urgent action uh, complaints to the Committee for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. And I'm going to uh, be writing one up uh, in relationship to Canada not following the uh, United Nations recommendations as an agenda. And I think it's going to be directed to Trudeau because Trudeau was just in uh, Ottawa with Ban Ki-moon saying he's going to work with the UN and he's going to do this and do that. I know a number of chiefs have already asked him for meetings to reconsider re and rethink this and he hasn't responded to any of them yet. 